Hello, this is John from TC Math Academy. In this particular video, we're talking about polynomial multiplication. And when you learn polynomial multiplication, of course, this is uh, algebra that we're talking about. There's a couple different uh, type of procedures and techniques you can use. What I'm going to show you in this uh, video is what I think is the easiest way to understand how to multiply any two polynomials. Now, in this particular problem, we're going to be taking a binomial and multiplying it by a trinomial. And again, when uh, you learn how to multiply polynomials, there's other kind of techniques like the FOIL technique. You may have heard of that. Uh, but the FOIL, the FOIL technique only applies to multiplying a binomial. Uh, of course, a binomial is a two-term polynomial times another binomial. So a binomial times a binomial, you would use the FOIL technique. But in this case, we have a binomial times a trinomial, a three-term uh, polynomial. So how can we do this? Well, again, I'm going to show you an easy way to think about this. So uh, if you know how to do this problem, though, go ahead and put your answer into the comment section. I'm going to show you the correct answer in just one second, and then I'm going to walk through, uh, you know, what I think is the easiest way to understand polynomial multiplication. Also, if you need math help with the course you're taking, test prep or homeschooling, make sure to check out my math help program at tcmathacademy.com. You can find a link to that in the description below. And if this video helps you out, don't forget to like and subscribe as that definitely helps me out. Okay, so the problem here that we're going to be using as an example to understand polynomial multiplication is y plus one times three y squared plus four y plus one. What is the product of those two polynomials? Well, let's go and take a look at the answer right now. Okay, so this is the correct answer. 3y cubed plus 7y squared plus 5y plus 1. Now, if you have these same terms, but they're not in this order, uh, well, you would have done it correctly, but I want you to always get in the habit of writing uh, things in mathematics, in algebra, when we're talking about polynomials or anything else like that, in what we call standard form, highest to lowest power. Okay, so this is what we call standard form, but this is the correct answer. Now, again, there's a couple of different approaches to doing uh, this problem, but if you got this right, that is fantastic. Let's go ahead and give you a nice little happy face in A plus a 100% and multiple stars. You can tell your friends and family that indeed you know how to multiply polynomials, an absolutely critical skill to be successful in algebra. Okay, so I'm going to explain this. Now, if you got this right, you might be saying, yeah, I don't need to watch this video because I already understand this. And that's perfectly fine. However, I'm going to suggest that you do stick around because this is a pretty easy, well, it's not the most difficult problem, but you could end up with much more complicated polynomials that could end up uh, confusing you. So, uh, so stick around here. Uh, and also, uh, what I'm going to explain to you might make your current technique, whatever you're using, it might uh, you might understand it even better. Okay. So let's go ahead and get into this right now. So the main idea here is uh, we want to use the distributive property, okay? The distributive property is probably one of the most coolest, most powerful properties uh, in mathematics. I love the distributive property. Now, of course, everything is important in math, but I think it's just such a cool property. And uh, technically speaking, the property would be written like this, A times B plus C is equal to AB plus AC. But let's just kind of forget this for a second, all right? Yes, this is the, the formal uh, way to describe the distributive property. But what is the distributive property? What's like a more you know, easier way to understand it? Well, the distributive property is another way to do multiplication. Okay, so let's take an easy example with numbers. So if I have 2 and I'm multiplying by 12, 2 times 12, well, hopefully you can do that in your brain. You're like, oh, yeah, 2 times 12 is 24, no problem. But the distributive property states is that we can uh, multiply, okay, but we can do this in a different way. So here we have 2 times 12. We can break up the number uh, or polynomial or anything else. We can break up uh, this value in any kind of way we want. In other words, we can um, um, have 12 written or expressed as the sum of 10 plus 2. Okay, so I could uh, instead of thinking of this problem as 2 times 12, I'm like, you know what, let's think of this as 2 times 10 plus 2 because 10 plus 2 is 12. Okay, now I can also uh, think of all kinds of creative ways to express 12. I could be like, oh, how about 14 minus 2? That's 12, right? 
as well. So there's all sorts of ways you could write 12, infinite amount of ways. But let's just kind of keep things simple. Okay, so the descriptor property talks about a number or a value being multiplied by a sum or difference, okay? So in this case, we're talking about a sum of two values. So we're gonna have two times 10, uh, 10 plus two, which of course is the same thing as two times 12, which we already know the answer is 24. Okay, so uh, you know this might seem kind of basic to some of you out there, but you know really want you to grasp the power of the distributive property. Okay, so what does the distributive property says? Well, we're going to distribute this outside number, right? We're going to pass it out to these other inside numbers. So we're going to take this two, we're going to multiply it by these two inside numbers. So two times 10 is what? That's 20. Now we're adding, so that's going to be a plus. And then we're going to take that two and multiply it by this other number. So two times two, of course, is four. And 20 plus four is what? 24, which we already knew the answer. So this is an application of the distributive property, and it is a absolutely uh, critical property in algebra. So let's go ahead and see the distributive property in action. But before we do that, let's just do a quick um, review of multiplying uh, monomial basic polynomial terms. So let's take this uh, a quick example. We have 2x times 3x. So the answer you can see here is 6x squared. But how do we do this? Well, when you're multiplying polynomials, you're going to multiply the number parts, which are called the coefficients. So 2 times 3, of course, is 6. And then x times x would be x squared. So 2x times 3x is 6x squared. Okay, so hopefully that's not an issue for you to understand. And now let's go ahead and start making these problems more interesting. So here I have 2x times 3x plus 1. Well, in order to do this problem, okay, I need the distributive property. It's absolutely required to uh, use the distributive property because now we're not dealing with something like 2 times 10 plus uh, 2, right? Where I could just, you know, oh, oh, 10 plus 2 is what? That's 12. So the answer 2 times 12 is going to be 24. I can't do that because I have 3x plus 1. I can't add these up. But what I can do is use the distributive property to still multiply this so I can see the individual terms here, right? So I could take this 2x and multiply it by 3x. So 2x times 3x is 6x squared. We just talked about that right here. But then I'm going to take this 2x and multiply it by this 1. Again, this is, uh, this is the, uh, the distributive property in action. So 2x times that 1 is 2x. And so the answer is 6x squared plus 2x. Okay, so we're kind of building our skills up with polynomial multiplication. 2x and 3x are what we call single term polynomials, i.e. monomials. Here, this is a monomial times a binomial, okay? And we can go further. I'm going to get into the actual problem here, but let me just talk to you real quick about something like this. What if I had 2x plus 1 times 3x minus 5, okay? So here I have a binomial times a binomial, and most algebra courses uh, teach something called FOIL, and it's uh, really important that you understand FOIL, but it stands for first, outer, inner, last. So uh, here, this would be your first ter uh, terms of these binomials. These are the outer terms, okay? These are the inner, and then these are the last. So you follow this little like recipe, FOIL, and you would get the correct answer. So we have a binomial times a binomial. We're gonna kind of skip this. You can uh, check out uh, how to use FOIL. I have additional videos on my YouTube channel. But guess what? After you learn how to do this problem right here, you can go back and do this problem no, without any issues, uh, and you don't even need to know FOIL, okay? So let's go ahead and just jump right into this problem right here. So again, I'm trying to get you to have an easy way to understand uh, polynomial multiplication in general, any situation. All right, so I have a binomial times a trinomial, and here is the way you want to approach it, okay? So typically you have the smaller polynomial to the left and the larger polynomial to the right, but if you had a trinomial times a trinomial, it wouldn't make a difference, okay? Just take the uh, polynomial to the left, and what we're going to do is we're going to be thinking about the distributive property, okay? So let's take a look at the terms of the polynomial 
on the left and the first term is y, right? So this is the first term and then we have a one as our second term. So what you're gonna do first is you're going to start with that first term, which is y, and we're gonna ignore this other stuff and uh, this other stuff to the right of this polynomial, which is one, we're just gonna focus in on that first term and what we're going to do is use the distributor property. Okay, we're gonna take this y and we're gonna multiply it by all these terms, this polynomial on the right. So y times three y uh, squared is three y cubed. Y times four y is four y squared. That's right there. So you just wanna kinda of write it out like so. And then y times one is y, okay? So uh, hopefully this is pretty easy. We're just you know, practicing the distributive property, but we are not done. Okay, so what happens when you take this first term and you apply the distributive property to this polynomial to the right? Well, once you're done, you're like, okay, let's see if we have any more terms uh, to the right of y. And of course we do, we have one. So let's scoot over and focus in now on one and um, go ahead and apply the distributive property to the polynomial to the right. So that's gonna be one times 30y squared, which of course is 3y squared. Now, this is a real important kind of uh, uh, thing to focus on. When you're writing this, you could just write 3y squared anyways, but pay attention here. We already have a 4y squared, so we're ending up with another y squared. So write that right underneath it. Okay, this is a good uh, kind of habit to get into. It's not required. You could write your 3y squared over here, but it just gonna, it's going to make it easier when you um, kind of put all this together for our final answer. So 1 times 3y squared is, is uh, 3y squared right here, and then 1 times 4y of course is 4y, and look, I already have a y term, so I'm gonna put that underneath it, and then one times one, of course, is one right there. Okay, so hopefully you understand this, and if we had three terms, we just, uh, once we get done with this, uh, middle term, you just get over and keep keep repeating the process, okay? So you can see, if I had a trinomial times a trinomial, I'm just gonna take one term at a time, apply the distributive property, write it out, and just keep doing this until all these terms are exhausted. I can't do anything. Um, anymore in terms of applying the distributive property. And now I'm simply going to add like terms. Okay, so I'm gonna add down in a column manner. I have three y cubed, there is no other y cubed. So this is my highest power. And again, you wanna write things in standard form. So that's three y cubed. I'm gonna add that to what? Four y squared and three y squared. This is gonna give me a seven y squared. Here I have one y and I have four y. Add those together, I have five y. And then uh, nothing, zero plus one is one. And here is our final answer, okay? So if you look at the FOIL technique over here, right? All we're doing is the same thing, okay? Let's just kind of think about FOIL. I'll just kind of explain it to you, but we're gonna start with this first term and use the distributive property, right? Once we're done with that, we're gonna scoot over to the second term and use the distributive property. And we end up with our first or, I'm sorry, our first outer inner last. It's the same thing. But instead of using one specific technique for a binomial times a binomial, if you understand the distributive property, uh, you can handle any polynomial multiplication uh, situation. You'll be a polynomial, polynomial multiplication superhero, which is pretty cool. But if you need more help with anything polynomials, how to add polynomials, subtract, multiply, Divide on division is a whole other thing, but factoring, this is extremely important to understand to be successful in algebra. So you might want to check out like my Algebra 1 course, uh, maybe Algebra 2, all depends on where you're at. Also, I have additional videos on my YouTube channel that can help you out, but hopefully this little video helped you out. If that's the case, don't forget to like and subscribe. And with that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your mathematics adventures. Thank you for your time and have a great day.